Hello. Today we're going to continue our discussion of logical fallacies. In the previous lecture, I introduced what logical fallacies are, why we should study them, and uh, the structure of an argument, and three common logical fallacies. Today I'm going to introduce five additional common logical fallacies. There are eight logical fallacies covered in these lectures. I've already covered circular argument, argument from authority, and bandwagon in the previous lecture. And today I will move on uh, to cover five additional fallacies. Although, as we'll see, some of these are really classes of fallacies rather than individual fallacies. First of all, let's consider hasty generalization. This is what happens when someone jumps to a conclusion. That is, they reach a conclusion without really being able to support it. They have insufficient evidence. That is, the evidence is just not enough to support the conclusion. We can also refer to this fallacy as the statistics of small numbers. And we have to be careful here because statistics can actually provide us with valid generalizations. The problem is that when we have an insufficiently large sample size, that is when we're basing our conclusions on a small number of items, many statistical tools break down. That is, they will provide results that are just not correct. A similar problem occurs when we have an unrepresentative sample a sample is unrepresentative when it has different characteristics than the group we are using it to make generalizations about. Let's consider, for example, the case of Bangkok versus the rest of Thailand. If we take a sample of Thais from Bangkok and use them to make generalizations about Thais from the entire country, we could be accused of hasty generalization because ties from Bangkok do have some different characteristics than ties from the rest of the country. Let's look at one more example of this. Say, for example, we look at the IELTS scores of students entering Mahidon University and see that the majority of students entering this university have a IELTS writing score of six or higher. If we generalize from this and say that the average IELTS writing score in the entire country must be the same as it is for students entering Mahidon University, we would be guilty of a hasty generalization. Because in this case, we're looking at a very specific sample. We're looking at students who are entering one particular university and a university where students probably have higher IELTS scores than uh, students entering other universities, and also higher than the average score for the entire country. We do have to be slightly careful, though, when we're looking for hasty generalizations, because, in fact, it is sometimes possible to generalize based on a relatively small sample if we have a representative sample. For example, many polls are conducted scientifically, political polls where people are selected at random to answer questions, for example, can provide valid generalizations. Next, let's talk about false cause. This is actually a family of fallacies, that is, there are many related fallacies that can be grouped together under the heading of false cause. In this, a cause is improperly identified. That is, we make a mistake regarding which event causes which other event. Perhaps the most common form of this fallacy is the post hoc fallacy, where we think that one event causes a second event simply because the second event happens after the first event. So, for example, if you leave an offering at the shrine outside of MUIC and then you pass your exam and you attribute your passing the exam to the offering that you left at the shrine. Another form of this fallacy occurs when 
we assume that because two things are, are correlated, that is, they're often seen together, they often occur together, we think that one of them causes the other simply by merit of their correlation. And sometimes it can be difficult to tell exactly which event causes which other event. Let's think about violent movies. And let's say that violent movies and violent behavior are correlated. That is, they often happen together. Violent uh, people often watch violent movies. Can we say necessarily that violent movies cause violent behavior? That's one way of interpreting this correlation. However, it may also be the case that people who are already violent simply like to watch violent movies. And there's an expression we can remember to protect ourselves from this fallacy or to keep us from jumping to conclusions when we see that two things are correlated. And that is, correlation does not imply causation. That is, simply because two things are correlated does not mean there is any causal relationship between those two things. If we have two events, A and B, it's possible that A causes B, it's possible that B causes A, it's also possible that a third factor, C, causes both A and B. An additional possibility is that there is actually no connection between them. In this case, correlation is just a coincidence, meaning that it happens through chance. So, in the case of violent movies, we've seen it's possible that violent movies A causes B violent behavior, that violent people who have violent behavior, B, simply like violent movies, which causes them to watch them, which is B causes A. We have another possibility that there's a third factor, C, which causes A and B. And finally, there's the possibility that it's just a coincidence. There's no strong relationship. Before we move on to the next fallacy, let's talk about one final example. When mandatory prayer in the schools in the U.S. became illegal, schools became more violent. That is, after prayer was removed, violence increased. If we conclude from that that removing prayer from the schools caused the increase in violence, we could be guilty of the post hoc fallacy. That is, we're saying that simply because violence increased after prayer was removed, that removing prayer was in fact the cause of the violence. In reality, there could have been many causes. There were many other social changes happening at that time. It could have been, well, going back to violent media, it could have been violent movies, and it could have been other changes in society. The next fallacy that we'll talk about is red herring. In this fallacy, we have premises that support a conclusion, but that do not really support the conclusion that the speaker claims they support. Here, the speaker is trying to change the topic. They're trying to distract the audience to hide the real issue. This is one way, one sneaky way of addressing counterarguments, or rather of avoiding counterarguments. Let's look at an example of this fallacy. What if we say that Thailand should go ahead with the plan, and this is, was a real plan, to buy two submarines from Germany for the discount price of 220 million US dollars? Well, how could we support this, right? What support is there for the decision to buy two submarines? What if we offer as a premise that the defense of the nation is important? It's important to protect Thailand, therefore, we should buy submarines. Actually, it's clear here that there's a disconnect between the premise and the conclusion. 
even if someone agrees that the defense of Thailand is important, that does not mean that Thailand should spend millions of dollars on submarines. The next fallacy is called the false dichotomy. This is the fallacy of reducing something to black and white, when in fact it's possible for there to be many shades of gray in between. In this fallacy, the audience is given an either-or choice. Either you're for us or against us. Either you support the president or you're not a good citizen. The situation is oversimplified and really many options are excluded, right? They're not given as true options. Let's look at one brief example of this. What if we say that drugs are a threat to the American way of life and we have to either eliminate drug use or our society will collapse? This is a false dichotomy because really we're reducing a very complex situation to only two choices, eliminate drug use or our society will collapse. And in fact, although drug use may not be a positive influence in society, it may cause problems, it almost certainly will not cause our society to collapse. Again, this is a fallacy that you might hear very often uh, in politics, in political rhetoric, or in advertisements. Finally, let's talk about the slippery slope. In this fallacy, we're saying that taking one step, taking one particular action, will lead to further steps that will be unstoppable and finally will reach some undesirable outcome. So in this, we take a step A, which leads to B, B leads to C, C leads to D, D leads to E, and so on until finally we're in a terrible situation. Take, for example, this argument for making tobacco illegal. Cigarettes are a gateway drug which lead to marijuana use. Marijuana users are more likely to abuse other drugs such as heroin, and heroin users are likely to become criminals to pay for their habit. Therefore, smoking cigarettes eventually leads people to become criminals and heroin users, which is a fallacy, which is a fallacious argument for making tobacco illegal. Although, in fact, in some cases, cigarettes may lead to uh, the use of marijuana or other drugs. Scientists do disagree about this. In fact, it is possible to stop along the way. Smoking a cigarette will not necessarily lead someone to marijuana, will not necessarily lead someone to harder drugs, will not necessarily lead people to become criminals. So this is a clear example of a slippery slope fallacy. So in conclusion, we've just talked about five additional fallacies for a total of eight that we will be covering in this course. Remember that there are many, many more fallacies and that we've just covered eight common fallacies. It will be helpful for you to remember the names of these fallacies. It will help you to organize your thoughts, help you to identify these fallacies when they occur, and also will help you to name them when someone tries to use them against you. So if you're in a discussion or a debate and someone uses, for example, the slippery slope fallacy, you should be confident to say that is a fallacy, that is the slippery slope fallacy, and that argument is invalid. I hope you find this helpful and thank you for your attention. Goodbye.